Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to install PHP on Windows. So first of all let's download it, so let's type PHP. Now let's go to this first link. In this page we have to click on this downloads link. Now we need to click on this link which allows us to download PHP for Windows. In this page we have two versions, the non-thread safe and also we have the thread safe. So let's download the thread safe. So let's click on this zip link. Now we need to save this zip file, but in my case I have already downloaded it, so I will cancel this download. Now let's go to the downloaded zip file, which is this one. All what I need to do is to extract it. So I will extract it on the C drive into a folder called my server. Also I will modify the name of this folder so I will remove this part from the name. And let's click on OK. Now let's go to the folder where we extracted PHP. So it is on the C drive into a folder called my server. So I have to open this folder. And here I need to create a file called php.ini. So let's copy this file and let's paste it. Now let's rename it. So I will rename it to php.ini. Now let's hit enter and let's click on OK. Now let's open this file. I will open it with Notepad++. So here I need to make some configurations. First of all, I need to find the extension dir variable. So this is the extension dir that I need to enable. So let's remove this command. Now I have to find the extensions. So I have to scroll down till finding the extensions. So these are the extensions. I need to enable some of them. So let's enable the first extension. The second one. Let's enable file info. And all the other extensions till my SQL. Now let's scroll down and let's enable other extensions. For example, let's enable OpenSSL. Let's enable PDO MySQL. Also, let's enable Swap and Sockets. We can also enable this extension. And now I need to find a variable called Time Zone. So let's find it. So this is the variable, I have to enable it. And for the value, I will type UTC between quotes. Now let's save this file and let's close it. Now we need to add PHP to the system environment variable. So let's copy this path. Let's close this folder. Let's go to system. In this window, let's click on Advanced System Settings. Then in this window, let's click on Environment Variables. Here I have to find the path variable, which is this one. So let's edit it. And at the beginning of this field, I will paste the path that I have copied to provide it with the highest priority. Also, I will add a semicolon as the separator between the different values. Now let's click on OK, then OK. Then OK again, and let's close this window. Now let's open the command prompt to check if we installed PHP correctly or not. So in this window I have to type PHP hyphen hyphen version. And let's hit enter. So as you can see this is the version of PHP that I have installed. I can also type the following command where PHP to check which file I am executing. And this is the correct file. So let's close this window and let's create a new PHP file. So I will use Notepad++ and here I will write a simple PHP file. Now let's save this file. So I will create a folder on the desktop that I will call web. And I will save this file as index.php. Now let's hit enter. 
so this file has been saved and what it does it prints this text to the user into this HTML file now let's close this editor and let's open the folder that contains the PHP file so from this folder I need to open the command prompt so I have to type CMD here and let's hit enter now in this window I can execute this PHP file using the following command it is PHP followed by the name of the file so let's hit enter and this is the result of the execution of the file I can also start the built-in web server of PHP using the following command so here hyphen s means that we will start the built-in web server and hyphen t means that we will use the current folder as the root folder now let's hit enter and now the server has started now let's go to the navigator and let's type localhost followed by the name of the file now let's hit enter and this is the output of our PHP file we can also remove the name of the PHP file because if we don't provide the name of the file the server will send us the content of the file called index.php so let's hit enter and here we can obtain the same output now to close the server all what we have to do is to click on Control plus C and now the server is down Finally, thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to the channel.